Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video where I review your projects, resumes, and portfolios. I realized I had about a backlog of around 50 of these, and it might make sense to do a little bit of batch processing. So today we have three people who just submitted resumes. I'm gonna go through all three of their resumes and hopefully find some insight in there that will be useful to you as the viewer. So special thanks to, I believe it's Jeff, David, and V who wished to remain anonymous. If you'd like your projects, portfolios, or resumes reviewed, remember to leave a comment below and also shoot me an email at kenji.ds at gmail.com. All of that information will be pinned in the first comment of the video. So without further ado, let's jump into this review here. So we're gonna start with David. So David is a student. He is studying neuroscience at UCSD, which I think is a fairly unique background for a data scientist. I think that if he were to focus on deep learning and understanding how neural nets are similar to how the actual brain works, that could be really compelling for deep learning research in general. So I really like how he starts here with the skills. That's something I always recommend. I think that this resume has also about the right amount of formatting. It's not too fancy, but there is some differentiation in color and it looks very clean, which I think is good. But again, let's start here. So he has Python, some of the libraries he's used, MATLAB, SQL, data analysis, and then machine learning, as, you know, support vector machines, linear log logistic and random forest regression. Aside from the logistic regression, it doesn't necessarily look like he's done a lot of classification. So there's no naive Bayes, there's no decision tree, there's no k-nearest neighbors. I would just do a little bit of research on those and include them because those are very basic things that you want to include. Coming from a neuroscience background, I'm also a little bit surprised that there isn't any deep learning at all. I think that that's something that David should look into learning a bit more about and experimenting with because, again, from his background, that would make the most sense. So I also really like this relevant coursework section. This is something I talked about in, I believe, the last review video. And I think he has legitimate relevant coursework here. I would, however, switch this around and put the most relevant ones up first. So anyone looking at this would want to see the data science and practice, the AI algorithms, and then maybe modeling and data analysis above. I also like how he includes to, that he's bilingual. I think that is a, a very cool and unique thing. Next, I love how he has his experience first. Even though he's still in school, I think that that's a perfectly fine practice. His work does seem really good. He has a great brand name on here with Facebook. All of his work seems very relevant. And there is kind of a, a clear transition from work in neuroscience to getting more specific with data, which I like. A lot of people say that they want to jump, you know, they want to jump careers into data science. And I, I don't think that that's a good idea. I think you should take the skills that you have, let's say you're in biology or neuroscience, and slowly start applying data science to the work that you're doing there. And then it's a much more natural progression to land a data science or machine learning role. One thing that I really want to stress here though is that the outcomes are not stressed at all in any of these descriptions. I think that you really want to try and quantify any of the things that you do. So even if it's just, hey, projects focusing on these types of things, maybe say even just how many projects or any type of impact that you, that you could have. Even if you write the total number of lines of code that you wrote, that's something that shows that a little bit more information and that is how a data scientist would write about these positions. Next, we have education. I think that all of this is totally fine. I would recommend if you have done any certificates, any additional coursework, I think education is actually the right place to put that. So I would go through and maybe put a little bit more information here. You can also put your relevant coursework under this education banner if you wanted to expand this skill section just a little bit more. 
These are, however, like I've mentioned, the skills that you generally want to talk about. He doesn't have anything too fuzzy aside from perhaps data analysis there. I think these projects are also fine, but I don't see any real quantification involved. So people care about the value add, they care about the results. They don't really care at all what tools you used. I do love, however, that he has a link to the GitHub here. Again, he did not submit his GitHub to be reviewed, so that's a little out of scope for this one. I'm happy to review his at a later date if, if he's interested in that. Let's move on to Jeff's resume. So Jeff is actually also in school in California. I don't think that they're at the same school. I notice, I will say going back to David, I notice he doesn't have a GPA. I think as long as it's over, you know, 3.0, it's reasonable to include in the, in the US. I'm not sure how that that scales to other countries, but just some, some food for thought there. So Jeff is doing statistical data science at UC Davis. What was, what was David? UC San Diego, okay. So here we go. So he does have his GitHub up here. For, for, for David and Jeff, I removed their phone numbers and, and stuff like that. I didn't want to put their public information out there. So he, has, he does a good job of putting that up here. Um, for David, that's one thing I forgot to mention is I think you should link to his LinkedIn as well as his GitHub aside from just here. I would just put those up top, make it easy. I don't think he did that before I removed his information. So Jeffrey starts here with his education. I would actually tell him to put his programming languages even above that. And I would take out the familiarity, whatever that, you know, beginner, whatever this stuff is. I would just put it in the order of what you're most comfortable with. That's what people are generally used to seeing. I would also go into a lot more depth here in terms of the packages that you've used, the other types of analysis that you've done, perhaps the types of algorithms that you've used. A little bit like how David did here, you know, random forest, whatever that might be. If, if you go to my video where I talked about my resume and the things that are right and wrong with it, I think the exhaustive list that I have on my resume is probably a bit, a good example of that. Again, I do a lot of things wrong in that, but I think this, that would be a good thing to pull from in this specific use case. I'll, I'll link that above and below in the description. So the education I think looks perfectly fine. I, I like the relevant coursework as well. I have the same advice here for for Jeff, as I did for David, put it in the order, not that you took it, but in the order that is most relevant to whoever is viewing it. In this case, 3.2, I think is a fine GPA, but I, I don't think you actually need to include, include that. You could also, I don't know if you have like a major GPA, if that would be higher, but you can absolutely put that instead. One thing after looking at this resume, I also think you could put campus involvement under your education. If you're ever hurting for space, that would be a reasonable thing to do. So it looks like Jeff doesn't have too much work experience, which is which is totally fine. I do highly recommend that he try and do some internships if he can as quickly as possible. That's going to be really, really important for getting a job out of school. So instead of work experience, I would actually just change this to experience and I would lump the projects and the uh, the data challenge and the developer for bit project stuff into just one thing. I think that that's totally fine. In terms of the actual content here, I think that this is this is cool. It was selected. If you could say uh, how many people you were selected from. So if you were, if there were ten people out of five hundred applicants, that would look pretty good. So work with other finalists. So maybe you could talk about what industry problem that you're solving. And then, so I don't, I don't think this one's really relevant here. You know, why would, why would they care about you receiving interview advice? And then this, this is cool, like attended it, but what did you do out of it? So 
I, I think, again, here, if you're doing something like this, you want to show what results you showed for Facebook, if there were any, or in turn, how you were able to grow from this experience. So it would be cool if you were able to host this on a GitHub. But again, I think that that work is perfectly fine. So Lapitop, I love hackathons. I love seeing hackathons on here. I would make sure that it is very clear that this is part of a hackathon. That, that's something that I highly recommend. So rather than putting projects, I think experience makes a ton of sense. So data analysis on trending YouTube videos in the US. So again, here we don't have an outcome until, until the second bullet. I would definitely include that in the first bullet and try and quantify it. So I think for not having you know true work experience, Jeff still does have very cool experience and he's clearly very engaged on campus. I would try and put this higher. I would I would legitimately put this part under the under the um, under the education up here. So again, the quick changes that that I'd make is I'd improve the amount of depth in the programming languages. I would probably just make it technical skills and put a lot more information there. I'll link to my video related to my resume and how that looks. I'd perhaps remove the GPA. I would re-rank the relevant coursework and I would make this experience and lump everything together. Finally, I would make sure that this says hackathon, make it very clear that you participated in one that looks really strong. I would also, whenever you are participating in hackathons, try and network just all the time. That's all you should be doing there. But yeah, I think that that's, again, this is pretty good. A couple tweaks and hopefully an internship in this coming quarter or one of the virtual internships that uh, the data professor talks about on his channel would be really worthwhile. So the last resume, which has already been anonymized by V, V is already an established data scientist. So I think that this will give us a little bit of depth, a little bit of different context than the previous two. So I think everything is fine. It does, however, look just a little bit crowded. So maybe I would increase the bottom margins, maybe decrease some of the fonts and just try and make it a little bit more aesthetically appealing. Again, it's just very, very crowded. So at the top, I think the technical skills are okay, but I don't know what Python packages you've experienced with. I, I mean, C++ is good to have, but I'm also curious as why that would be first as a data scientist. There's a lot of deep learning stuff, uh, reinforcement learning, object detection, but there isn't any really of the like, basic skills of a data scientist. So I'd probably like to see that as well. I would again reference my earlier video where I talk about, okay, just include all of the things that related to Python or whatever it is and make it fairly robust. Perhaps it might be the case where V is actually filling that in based on the position. I would really recommend when you're applying to new positions that you, that you go back and do that. So you see what skills they have, assuming you have those skills, you put them in the exact order that they ask for them in. So I think this experience, employment experience is really good. And he does quantify this fairly well. It's very, very clear and I don't have any problem with this. From university, the coursework stuff, looks totally fine. I don't know if, if what this technically means. I, I assume this is perhaps some graduate degree. If you have coursework and those other things, it's absolutely worthwhile. I, I do, however, like how this is organized, not from a top-down perspective, but from a, this is what I did, this is where I did it, and this is how I performed. I think that, that is fairly good organization. For leadership and rewards, honestly, I, I like this section, but I would just include it under the relevant job that it was a part of. So you can bold it or you can highlight it in some different way under the organization, but 
I just think it would help to clean up one of the sections. I also, I really like the projects that he's done here. I also like how, you know, he says what the project is, the first one says what the project was, and then he has some sort of quantification. I also like how he shows what, what tools he used in each one of these things. So I don't really have too many critiques there. I just think that maybe when someone's looking at this, they're just a little bit overwhelmed. And, you know, I hate to say it, a lot of the times, some companies are actually looking for more basic data science work than actually just deep learning. So V really focuses on deep learning a lot, and that's okay if he's looking for maybe a deep learning engineer position. But if he's applying for mostly general data science roles, you wanna have a bit more breadth of the actual skills that you're showing. So you wanna show that you can do more basic analysis, cluster analysis, classification with, with non-deep learning models. And I don't know if that's necessarily hurting him, but it limits the amount of positions that he would be really appealing for. So that might be something is that, think about, it, okay, if this person is just really having trouble finding a job, you want to make your resume maybe a bit more generalizable to lower level or just more basic data, data science positions than deep learning focused positions. So overall, I think that this is really good. Just the focus is maybe too much on deep learning. Maybe work on the technical skills and showing the breadth of your skill set there. Also, perhaps moving this leadership and awards under the actual employment. So. Hopefully these tips will be useful to everyone else watching, kind of got to understand how a student should look at the resume versus someone who's been in the field for quite some time. I really think that all three of these were really solid resumes and there are just a couple tweaks that all of them could do to either get their first internship, get their first job out of school, or land a new data science position. As usual, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.